can't get Facebook to, to, to latch on here. And we should be live. Live on YouTube? Okay. Um, shoot, yeah. because I'm still trying to get this Facebook thing. This going. meeting is being um, broadcast on Facebook on Live. YouTube, just give us one second. I'm just trying to see if Robert, I can I come Facebook. back in one minute? Yes, do your thing. Okay, great. I'll be back in one minute. Okay, I'm going to disappear for one minute. Okay, okay. That was our guest. The broadcast of Facebook Live has stopped. Our guest says he'll be back in one minute. All right, we're 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 set. This is fine. We're not going to go with with YouTube today. Um, unfortunately, I'm sorry. We're not going to go with Facebook today. Unfortunately, I can't get um it to work. So I wanted to talk about. Uh, what today is going to happen? Oh yeah, first of all, I gotta say the thing I always say. Welcome to 96 Sports Open Hours. Today is November 8th, and you're watching episode 123. My name is Robert Wolf, and we're joined today by a awesome guest, uh, Gordon Kruberg from Gumsticks. He's actually the president and CEO and founder of Gumsticks. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Gumsticks, then you'll get to hear a whole bunch about it today. Uh, not only just Gumsticks, but you'll also get to hear about some of the other cool things that they're doing, such as Geppetto and a new um, let's call it feature or product that they'll be uh, also featuring today in, in this episode. Before we introduce Gordon, though, which um, he said he'll be back in just a minute, I do have a couple announcements that we usually make uh, at the beginning of every episode. The first is that if you missed last week's episode, I would like to share that with you. It was a fun episode. Well, technically, um, we were supposed to be meeting with, uh, who, who was it, uh, Max Bradley Hoover, but Max wasn't able to make it at the very beginning. He showed up a little late. I will share that link right there. That was last week's episode. Um, and uh, we actually had a good time. There was, there was a lot of fun discussions. We talked about some of the cool stuff that Mani and Sahaj are working on. And then um, we had Rajan from Qualcomm who joined in and talked about some of the cool projects that he's working on as well. So. It was really cool. And then in the last 10 minutes, Max showed up and we had um, we had a fun little discussion. And he did promise that he will be joining us again in a future episode because there seemed to be a lot of people who were interested in hearing about his work with SolidWorks as well as his 3D printing work. So it should be um, an interesting episode coming up. Now, let me see if, if Gordon is back. Gordon, are you back? I am back. Yes, indeed. Okay. Excellent. So yeah, it's time to introduce. I'm, I'm just going to give a, a quick little introduction to you and then we'd love to hear more about it. But um, correct me if I'm wrong here. Gordon, you are the president and CEO as well as a founding member of the company Gumsticks back in October 2003. And mm -hmm. um, you've worked for a whole bunch of companies in the tech world. Uh, throughout that, you've had roles such as, you know, executive roles, president, CEO, chairman roles, board of director roles, all sorts of very cool stuff in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm interested in hearing more about you. Maybe you could give us this this two minute eleva elevator pitch of, of, about you. Two minute elevator pitch pertinent to today is that I have always been interested in the in, in the um, where natural intelligence meets artificial intelligence, starting back in 1979, uh, specifically when I first got involved in it. Started doing neural network work in the mid 80s while I was on a PhD program, um, which I dropped because, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, all sorts of reasons, but uh, finished an MD, did venture capital for about a decade. Then I've been uh, started into startups for a little while, uh, all across the board in terms of what we did. Uh, and then have been running gumsticks for the last 15 years. We originally started because uh, in 2000, um, I came to the realization that the biggest uh, uh, trend in the 21st century was going to be automation, and uh, I wanted to enable robotics with distributed processors. At the time, the smallest form factor was the PC-104, uh, and what I wanted to do was a tiny little oh. Linux server that could be distributed throughout a robot, and I mean Android. And it was a crazy idea, um, but that was how I came up with the form factor for Gumsticks, which turns out to have been the first real uh, computer on module. Um, we were certainly the first one to do uh, a com with uh, a full implementation of Linux. For those of you who care, G, G Libc Linux instead of UC Libc. Um, 
And uh, from there, we did more and more automation in order to get a product out the door internally within uh, three weeks. After a few years, we had a lot uh, built up in about, ooh, I'd say about five years ago, we decided that um, the next real wave of automation um, other than physical automation was knowledge worker automation. And so we had a lot of uh, uh, process management and automation tools that made the lives of our electrical engineers a lot simpler so that they could work at an abstracted level. And one of them said, we should put this on the web. And thus Geppetto was born. So for the last five years, we have been concentrating on making Geppetto better and better and uh, trying to abstract everything that an engineer does from the moment he has the idea or she has the idea to build an electronic device to getting that device functional and in hand. Um, and at this point, and uh, that kind of walks us right up to what we're doing today, which is a sh you know showing off uh, Board Builder, which is, um, I, I think, the, uh, the, the single best abstraction layer across electrical engineering design tools that there is out there. That, that, Does that answer your question? Actually, yeah. No, yeah, that, that was excellent. Yeah, so, so there's, there's actually a lot of things that lead up into Board Builder, right? And I, I want to talk to you a little bit more yeah. about, about some of these other things because there's, there's going to be people on the call or people that watch this video that still want to know a little bit more about Gumsticks, about Geppetto, sure. and then ultimately Board Builder. And you, you, you are going to have some demos for us? Yes, specifically only uh, Board Builder. And, and the, the, okay. the, as I started thinking about this, it was, you know, that's not going to take up a lot of time, but that's really what you guys got to see. I mean, it's it's what I'm I'm, I'm most proud of today. And um, you, you know, Gumsticks has got a whole bunch of other really cool um, things going on. Uh, you, you know, ranging from you know, we got an email in May saying that uh, uh, take a look at this picture. Um, it was taken with a gumsticks camera. And that picture was a far field shot that had both the Earth and the Moon in because we're on the CubeSats that are on the way to Mars. So there are two, uh, two Mars um, uh, cooperative satellites that are just little CubeSats that are um, uh, they're on their way now. They should be there any day now, and I'm keen to see uh, what happens as they get there. But so we, we range from little cameras that are on the way to Mars to, you know, undersea rovers. And we've got a lot, you know, those are the fun projects. I mean, we've got, you know, a significant proportion of the cameras that are on their way to Mars in terms of market share, but it's two. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, what keeps us in business is not Marsh, Martian cameras, but uh, people who are building, uh, you know, industrial IoT of device, IoT devices specifically. Um, and uh, those who have an idea, I mean, what we see in the market, and I'm, I'm sure this is familiar to uh, everybody at 96 boards, there are a lot of people who grew up programming who, or who are growing up programming and are able to start on something like a Raspberry Pi or a Beagle board or a Beagle bone or a Gumsticks and uh, know what it's like to to program in Linux or at the lowest end in, in, in on an Arduino platform and cobble together, you, you know, these basic boards that run great software and, you know, connect with wires to a bunch of sensors and motors and begin implementation uh, of whatever the solution is. So they, they come generally from the software world and realize that it's not that hard to cobble together pieces of hardware to get to do something um, and to solve a problem. And what we end up seeing is a lot of software folks who have got a great piece of vertical market software that requires a dedicated piece of hardware, and they want to get it, they want to get their software out there running a dedicated piece of hardware. And, and there, there are lots of ways to do it, uh, you know, going to find somebody to contract um, or, you know, at the other end of the extreme, you know, something like, you know, what Geppetto does, although I don't know anything like Geppetto, but Geppetto. Uh, Geppetto seems to be the only, Geppetto <clears throat> seems to be the only thing like Geppetto on the market right now. Yeah, actually, I mean, so, like, so I've seen, I mean, the, the, the traditional CAD tools are still CAD tools. I mean, somebody's yeah. got to know where to put a capacitor, where to put a resistor in order to get a, to get something working. And, and Geppetto is all about automating that process so that 
it can be driven from a functional perspective. And if you think of at the architectural level, think of object oriented programming, the ability to um, know that you're creating a class with a bunch of methods and you can keep a lot of stuff private. Geppetto is all about keeping the electrical engineering details private. They're all private. Think of them as private variables and then have a whole bunch of public um, methods like give me the Gerbers, give me the schematics, give me a 3D uh, drawing, and, and now up to and including give me a board support package with a device tree in it, or um, give me, uh, you know, give me whatever you want to know about a particular device that you've cobbled together from very basic building blocks. That's the principle here. Yeah, so, so I want to kind of maybe try to simplify this for anyone who's listening here. It, essentially, it's like a drag and drop uh, uh, board builder program, right? And and it really is that exactly simple. what it when is. you go, yeah. When you go in there, you know, you you know, you're you're probably used to working with some sort of CAD software, and like what Gordon was saying is, you know, it gets difficult. There, there's you actually have to take classes to do some of these things or watch but, hours and hours. Robert, of videos. should we just do a quick showcase of it? To get just yeah, at this point, actually, just do the demo because it it's it's confusing to describe, but easy yeah. to, easy yeah, to yeah, do. do. So it. I'm gonna just and, I'm gonna share my my Google app. Do we see my screen? I am. Um, it's on. There you go. Loading. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to share the the link to the uh, Geppetto website. Okay. <clears throat> now I cannot see whether you can see. Uh, no, we can see. It, it, we okay. can see uh, your yeah your your drawing board. And do you see my cursor rolling around? Yep. Okay, great. I'm going to um, hide you in that case. Oops, that's not what we want. I want to hide you here. Uh, and... So is this the board builder or is this Geppetto? This is just, this is Geppetto. I, we, we opened the screen and, and what's going on is that um, the, the blue jeans, oh, there we go, is, is, is in the way so I can't see my toolbar. Okay, so now um, this is board builder. So we have different landing sites. So you can actually go to board builder and land with a Raspberry Pi compute module already in place or a uh, NVIDIA Jetson already in place or uh, our, our Arduino uh, processor or Arduino compatible processor already in place. But we're gonna start at the beginning and say, I wanna choose a processor. Um, top of list um, is, well, let's just use a, everyone knows the Raspberry Pi. I should probably use a uh, 96 boards IoT. We'll come on back to that. Sensors, um, we can say I want a temperature sensor, I want a light sensor, I want a uh, barometer on it, I want a headset jack, no, we don't need more memory. Compute module, so are we gonna do, let's do Y-Link 8 is a Wi-Fi Bluetooth, USB, we can put on a, um, a standard jack. Then down here, uh, I'm not gonna move you guys around again. We're going to put mounting holes on it and see that w w our board will include everything that we said, but it turns out we also need to add an audio codec and uh, the board builder figured that out for us. And there we go. Now it's building our board. There's our board. You can see that it's red and green. Uh, red means that there are still connections that are required in order for that board to be, that module to be functional. Um, let's add our power sources. We get to choose what we want. It's now calculating the power requirements, and it's showing us that we a barrel connector can supply the five volts we need, um, and we need a three. We need these three things down here. So now we're going to add them. Boom. That's it. Now you can see our board being built. That's what it's going to look like. Um, I'm going to save the design, and I'm going to save it open hours. Wait, you can export it as a, as an STL as well, and then print out like a three D rendition of it. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. This test is for Robert. There we go. Yay! I can also share it with the community, and this shares it under a Creative Commons license. We can jump, it, but we're sharing it. There's the board. Now we're going to save it. Now, a whole bunch of things pop up. So I've, th we're looking at, uh, let's just call it the CEO view. There are a couple buttons I get that you don't get. One is find power. <laughs> 
and one is power. So we're, we're working on a power, I'll show you the power tree that we've got um, behind the scenes right now. Uh, it's still in beta, um, but it gives us a chance to see exactly Uh oh. Did Gordon drop? You can still hear me, right, Sahaj? It's not me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I think Gordon dropped. Okay. Um, no, he's well, that's there. fine. He's oh. I, 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 I don't know what happened. He says we, we cannot see his screen. Yeah, so I can't see his screen either. But we'll still talk about this because until Gordon gets back, Gordon, please, if you can hear us when you're ready, speak up so we can go, go back. But essentially, I want to I want to address this because it's it's pretty cool. And Sahaj, I'd like to hear kind of your input on this. But when you're talking about building a a board, a PCB, it's not easy. Sahaj, I mean, you started getting into KiCad, right? Tell us about your yeah. experience with KiCad. Uh, I think it was a lot different from what the kind of work I'm used to do. The amount of work that I see here being done on Geppetto is like. Um, it gives me an, a, a complete overview and I have like kind of confidence that is this is going to work. My experience with was KiCad was to see my first design uh, in my hand and to test it out. It would have taken like a month for it to get fabricated and everything. So that's why it was kind of a challenge on my end. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I essentially with this is first of all, I, Gordon kind of skipped the old process, but you used to with with geppetto okay with geppetto it was still very easy you could drag and drop all of those components that ended up on the board you could drag and drop them onto the board you would have a a situation where if you drag and drop something in the wrong place it would turn red you might have to move it around a little bit again you drag and drop it it turns red you might have to add a component that makes it functional etc cetera, etc cetera. now with the board builder you've kind of extended this to the next layer of of easiness and you now just get to pick your parts and then the program decides where to put everything to make it functional and i think that's pretty awesome G gordon are you back sorry i, think I am back happened. um i i thought i was there the whole time but uh it wasn't sharing uh correctly i think it was something to do with i was trying to do the whole screen um so oh, can yeah. you hear me okay yeah yeah, yeah. so just, back we this is we're just talking about about how cool this was but yeah, sorry, yeah keep, so keep so here we go now now we're in regular geppetto mode meaning we can uh, move things around uh, for example we can dimension it and what what you'll see is that the board builder when we say you want mounting holes will automatically place the four mounting holes in the corner and pin them so that if we grow or shrink the board um, the uh, mounting holes get dragged with it so we can actually do cute things like shrink this down as much as we want now that we've uh, um, uh, got the board built. Um, I'm going to move this down, this down. Actually, there's really no reason to continue with the uh, the, the dimension demo because it, it, it just kind of works. Um, but these are the kinds of things that we can do um, in, in uh, Geppetto itself, which are all um, you know, physical constraints as opposed to um, logical constraints. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to save this again and, and highlight some of the other really, really critical things here. Number one is the auto dock. Uh, number two is the auto BSP. And then, of course, number three is uh, validating this and, and being able to add this to your shopping cart and purchase it. Of course, you're wondering how much is this going to cost? It's $90 per unit. Um, and it'll ship on November 29th. Uh, right now, if people order two two different designs in one order, uh, we'll, we will waive the setup fee for the second order. Oh, okay. So, 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 so the question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so, so I, I, I have. So basically, you're saying that if you if you build two designs and you link them to the same order, you pay one setup fee for two designs. Does that apply? To that's correct. Yeah. And what, what we'll end, that just that, that's, that's exactly right. And what we'll do is um, take advantage of running two at the same time in the same quantity. And so that setup fee that we charge goes straight to uh, stencils and uh, manufacturing um, at our contract manufacturers so, because they've got to do programming and uh, set up a test environment. 
Okay, let's quickly look at what. Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I just want to I want to I want to like accent how awesome this is, right? So like, uh, (laughs) you know, first 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 of all, the 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 unit price unit or the price per unit, right? In a lot of cases, you know, when people go out and they build boards like this, it's not easy to just get one unit or five units. Could you could you talk a little bit more about kind of like you know how how you're doing this because you know sometimes when you want to get a, a a decent you know board out there you need to order 10 20 100 200 right. units and you're able well, to just I, do this I, I, I will set this I, I I will say that we are changing one policy from allowing one board to uh, we're, we're going to from now on require at least three minimum and and the reason is that we always. You know, we've got a policy here that we will build one extra, keep it in house. Um, in many cases, not all, but what we do is do uh, we will run regression testing on new editions of software. So when a new kernel comes out, we will run new kernels against old boards. Um, that's mm. all. That's all. Not all automated right now. It will be automated shortly, so that we have a complete um, uh, complete test suite on on new software with old boards. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess the, the critical point is automation. When, when I said that we automated a lot of electrical engineering, I, I really mean it. And, and uh, making sure that we have a lot of the processes and standards set up internally so that uh, the amount of, of electrical engineering in hours that we apply to any one of these boards is nominal. Um, and we really do yeah, the, uh, fun, fundamentally internally we the moniker is we either automate or outsource and we've got some great manufacturing partners here in the Bay Area uh, and the, including you know the fabs are all custom and the uh, contract manufacturing is custom um, uh, and and that that's how that's how we've done it. So we, you know, we we do a number of these every week. So you know, we kind of got the process down. Yeah, even Tyeth uh, Tyeth in the chat, he's commenting. He says it's nice that the price includes a tested board, months yeah. of saved time. Um, yeah, thank you for pointing that out. I would, I'd, I'd love to jump to um, two things here. One is the auto dock because in order to understand what you're testing, you've got to know how to program it. And that involves not not just the documentation, but also you know a, a pretty complete board support package with the device tree. So let's 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 do the um, auto dock. And uh, I think I'm sharing Chrome, not the whole screen. And I'm going to need to uh, change and share. Now, do you see um, the PDF that just opened up? No, we don't. Okay, so I got to figure out. I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing and then restart. Okay. Yeah, and there, there's also a question that popped up in the chat, but I'm sure you're going to get to that. Uh, someone's okay. interested to see what the auto BSP output is. Yes, we will. We'll show that exactly. Um, Excellent. Next. Okay. So, do you see the uh, the yeah, the preview, the PDF? Okay. Great. So, this this is you know that's page one of it. I got to move you around. Uh, page one, and we can. Um, scroll through this. Um, this is the PDF that was automatically generated. And you can see all the modules that are on the board. Um, there's a Raspberry Pi, there's the Y-Link 8, audio codec, stereo headset jack. Um, let's jump to, uh, all, all these are straightforward. Let's quickly look at what the temperature sensor is. We jump down to here and we see uh, it's an ambient temperature sensor. We've got the data sheet link for it here. Um, a quick description of it, but from a programmer's perspective, the I2C slave address is uh, hex 48, um, and here's a quick description of it, what it's connected to, um, and it sits on I squared C. Oh, the, there may not be multiple I squared C buses on the, oh, I2C zero, there's, where, there we go. It's connected to I2C zero on the Raspberry Pi compute module, and there's what the uh, address is. Um, so we've got um, this, um, you know, frankly, we like to think that it's everything you need to know in order to program the device, um, and we're adding to it regularly. Um, here's the module connection graph for somebody who wants to understand the topology of how it is all connected. Remember, this audio codec is something that uh, the board builder added automatically because it knew that you wanted a headset jack, and the headset jack needed something that provided it uh, um, 
uh, headphone stereo, and the only thing in, in the library was this audio codec, and, and that connects to Raspberry Pi. Gordon, um, and then these, here's the power. Sorry. Do do these components? So so on this auto dock, where are you keeping all this information? You just do you have a team back there that's like updating? Like say for instance, you get a new you get a new device. Well, then you add that yes. to your system. And yes. so what about like modification? Like what if a what if a part goes um, end of life or gets changed to some new part? Like is there a That's way what, for the they, they do to that too. Okay, but is there a way so for now the the, the, to contribute to this? Uh, we have not, be, because we manufacture the boards, we take quality control seriously. And yeah, it's true. so we're point. not ready to open the gates to community yet. Um, that is uh, very close. It's very dear to our heart to to uh, open this, and we're working with people to figure out how to do this right, um, and expect announcements in 2019 on how this will be open to the community. Yeah, you definitely would need a very strong gatekeeper or a team of gatekeepers, <laughs> you know, because you couldn't open it like Wikipedia, because Wikipedia, someone could change it, and then it's kind of asked for forgiveness, not permission, whereas you would definitely want permission <laughs> people to ask for permission. Yes. Um, yeah. Or, or really great electronic supervision. Yes, um, yes. True. So there are ways, so more to come in 2019. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and then I'll right, take a cool. look at the module power graph and show, um, um, this is it, barrel connector in, it feeds a regulator or feeds a standard A jack directly, sensors, how everything is connected um, and drawing power. So I'm gonna shut that down now, um, unless you have some questions about it. Yeah. Okay. So um, Tyeth um, Ty is asking, but by the way, let me highlight this. Yeah. Writing this type of documentation is not only a pain in the butt, but very time consuming. The fact that, the fact that he hit a button, <laughs> Up yeah. is amazing. Um, so so well done on that, Gordon. Thank and you. Your team. Yeah. yeah um, so, so, so rem re remember what I said about uh, you know having the data structure behind this, the abstraction layer behind this that allows us to create new methods. That that really is the magic architecture here, and uh, we're yeah. we're very proud of all the work that's gone into it, and 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 the team that's done it. Yeah. No, that's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so, so Tyeth has a question. He says, um, I presume you do take component requests to be added into the system if a client needs a large enough and is financially viable. Uh, absolutely, yes. And, and generally we take, when somebody makes a request, uh, there are many axes along which we grade the request, um, which include general uh, general interest. So if it's something that it, we, we believe we just haven't got to, but um, there are lots of potential customers or uh, potential customers for that particular need, then um, with one lead customer, we'll undertake putting it in uh, ourselves. There are others where uh, we think it's uh, very unlikely that we're going to have another customer for it in the next little while. And so we will do it and charge for engineering time to do it. Um, we really yeah. like to um, emphasize the former. On the other hand, there are many customers that have uh, large volume requirements. I mean, this is not just for production. This is not just for prototyping. It's it's perfect for prototyping. But the cool thing is that I mean, look at this picture that we've got right here. That that's ready for many. That's ready for um, inclusion in a product and going to scale in an industrial device. And I mean, also, uh, I, I mean, it's the, as quick as this was, I mm -hmm. mean, you're pretty much ready. And I, I'm very, I'm very surprised to see the whole STL file export as well, because while you're even waiting for your board, you could print out a model of your board and start developing the product yeah. around it. So like, yes. there, there's so many ways you've streamlined the ability to yeah. build your path to product. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty awesome. So, and and, and that that's exactly right. That's why we do it. Um, you know, STL does. You know, the mapping of the board to STL does have. Uh, it's not 
let's say it's not machine um, screw tolerances, um, but it's STL 3D printing tolerances. Yeah. Okay. So another, let's, let's jump another, to this next thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say another question popped up here real quick. Yeah. Um, Mishra is asking, can we change the peripherals connected to a different bus than default if required? Do you mean, for example, um, I'm going to go back to the connection mode. I think, for example, this MS, this oh, is the barometer. So what you we want to do is go for a barometer. Your... Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Here, yes. let me go back. Yeah. Um, stop sharing that. Go back to, I wonder, can I share the whole screen? Do you see my whole screen now? Um, it's loading and yes. Okay, so that's good. Yeah. So for example, what you're asking is here we've got a, um, I'm just gonna pull this over here to separate it a little bit. You can see that uh, it's the MS5611 barometer. What you wanna do is move it from the I2C onto the SPI bus, for example. Um, and then this will tell oh. you it can't be connected while GPIO7 is connected. But let's click and see, I'm gonna disconnect that. And now I can connect it to SPI0. Um, and then the RGB needs an interrupt line. And so we can hunt around for an interrupt line for that. We'll choose GPIO 13. There we go. So not only were we able wow. to say, yes, switch it, but we were also able to dive through, for those of you who have dealt with pin mux tables and different mappings, um, we dive through that implicitly and share what's available um, for uh, for use. So you did, uh, so you did demonstrate this uh, once at Linaro Connect in September. Yes. San Francisco. So it's, it, so that this is the, basically the same thing. Yes, that, that what uh, what I demonstrated in September was the pre-release. <laughs> okay. That was that was the highlight of what you can do, <clears throat> um, and uh, it. it, it it's uh, released now. Yeah, no, uh, the, my, my mind was blown back then. So. Yeah. <laughs> so let's Especially take a look. look the, thank you. Let's let's take a look at the uh, the other big question that's hanging there, and that is, how do we do? What do we do for the BSP? Um, let me just jump onto the BSP right here, um, and open it up. So we're looking at the Raspberry Pi. CM0, um, we've got a README here, which describes, you know, how to use what we've just built. Um, installing the sudo apt install, you know, this is how you compile. Special instructions boards with cameras. Um, and then here's the source, the DT, device tree source. Let's see um, if there's, you know, I don't know what you want to take a look at here. Um, SPI zero connected buses. Remember, we we had something connected to SPI zero. There's a UART on here. What's on the I2C, sure. a temperature sensor? You can see temperature sensor there. So you just you just click the um, the export board support package right now? Yeah. And this oh, is what I just awesome. downloaded. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's and then in so this needs to apply get uh, thrown into the boot sector somewhere and instructions are as again back here in the readme um, and there's the device tree overlay which is the, um, the the binary that goes along with this uh, uh, DTS um, <clears throat> there you know inevitably um, something pops up that somebody wants to do differently in programming and we include the device trees the DTS so that if they want to use this in um, uh, in a different setting they're able to so <clears throat> internally something we've uh, we've got cooking internally is Android support and um, <clears throat> having <clears throat> excuse me Android support for a Raspberry Pi uh, the, uh, this auto what we are using internally is the standard auto bsp generated dts which is compiled differently for android so it's a different i, I believe different dtbo but i will find out later when when people in the office tell me i was right or wrong <laughs> are you using the uh, android android or the android things platform um 
Right now, Android, Android. And uh, I say that perhaps I should double check, but it's Android. I mean, uh, it, it, it's Android. It would be, that makes more sense, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, I got more questions. La last thing, question. let me just re really quickly show if somebody wants to validate this, um, there are things that will pop up and say that there's no reset button and there's the UART zero of the Raspberry Pi is not connected. So we're not gonna see uh, kernel debug messages. Um, you know, we can make these make these fixes and then then uh, order the design. Uh, we're not gonna go through that, but but, you know, all we need to do is save this, um, validate it, uh, click the order button, and then it'll be put into uh, my own personal account for ordering. Okay, Very Robert, nice. what else? So there's there's a question, a comment, and then I have a question. So sure. Tyeth asks if a component supports switching if a component supports switching the I2C bus line with external resistors, for example, then then that would be an option available in Geppetto, question mark? I don't know what the question means when you say yeah. switching I2C with external resistors. What does that mean? Yeah, I'm here? trying to actually kind of gauge that question as well. Um, we can skip it, maybe, Ty, if, if you want to clarify that a little more. But Mishra, Mishra comments think, saying he thinks he thinks you guys have done a great job um, with regards to the BSP. Thank you. So, so Ty says from I2C bus zero to, to bus one or changing changing ID of the I2C device. Well, the so I2C components... device idea is ID is actually set by the chip vendor, not by us. No, oh, they, I understand they, what you're saying. So yeah. I, no, 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 I do understand. A lot of I2C devices have a um, have a an address this select is that is done with uh, resistor pull-ups, and right now we have not implemented that. That's uh, just for for uh, I, I, I'm going to say laziness, but the answer is really priorities. Um, it, it is something that if somebody told us post hoc, you know, they did a design and it's sitting at um, 48, and they'd rather have a a pull-up on on the address select so that it sits on 49 instead. That is something we can do. It's not implemented in Geppetto today. It will be. It's it's a secondary priority to us against adding multiple devices. We are doing our best to add, you know, about, our, our spec is adding about three devices a day right now. Nice. Yeah, so so I have a question. The, 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 the last thing you mentioned right before we went into Tyus' question, was about validating and sending it to the store for you to purchase right now yeah i think i asked this question i gosh a year ago and i can't remember what the answer was but i'm still curious about being able to send this to the gumstick store and then can a consumer or a user develop a board put it on the gumstick's board apply a margin and profit from this, like selling it through you guys? Because I think that might've been something that, that was talked about a while back. Yeah, uh, so that's an interesting idea. And, and we, we actually ran an experiment of that early on and there, there was really no interest in it. Um, people oh, okay. who design boards want to, I mean, the designers want to have the direct relationship with the customer and um, so, so we haven't we haven't seen an interest for that. I mean, hypothetically, it's an interesting idea, uh, and and uh, but we've seen no interest in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I was I was thinking about kind of uh, somewhat of the model that we're trying to approach right now with some of our our mezzanine partners, uh, mm -hmm. you know, or community. They develop a mezzanine, but then you know, how do you bring the cost down, right? Well, you need to do a big batch. So then you need to get crowdfunded or you need to find another partner that wants to throw out a large amount of money. Which, so which was exact, to... that's exactly what we tried. We tried a crowdfunding approach and said that if um, any number of people um, signed up, we would waive the manufacturing fee. And and so we did, oh. we did a, 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 a very generous, um, Oh, we thought it was generous <laughs> offer uh, uh, sure and, and had had no real interest. We actually thought it was perfect for 
uh, classroom setting, for example, where you know there might be a device that um, several schools wanted. Think robotics competition, and somebody would put it together and and get um, others interested in it, but there there really was no take up. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, that's it's it, it's cool, and maybe maybe there will eventually be be um, a need for that later. Uh, Ty yeah. did comment. He said, maybe, "Maybe you were a bit less well known back then, but but the fir with the first trial, Geppetto has definitely improved since." So, oh yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I definitely have known uh, noticed Geppetto taking pretty pretty big leaps. And and just to let everyone know. You know, you should definitely be following uh, uh, Gumsticks on Twitter. It's at Gumsticks, as spelled. I'll, I'll put it right here in a, se in a second. But they do post some cool deals every now and then. So every now and then you might see something on Gumsticks going like 20% off or, you know, we're waiving the fees for the next week, stuff like that. It, it's, it's definitely worth, worth following them. Um, I'm going to post their Twitter in just a sec. Good. Thank you. Yeah. So we can buy designs that have been created by other people on the store as well. So could you say it again? Uh, so you, you said the when we say my design goes onto your store for us to buy, but can we buy designs that have been created by other people? So uh, when I saved this design, I actually saved the design um, uh, with Creative Commons. And so I'm going to jump to my community. We didn't cover the tab. So my account has um, all, all my designs here. Designed by Gumsticks has uh, designs, for example, here, let's take a look at all designs that have got um, a stereo headphone jack from Gumsticks. There we go. Um, community, these are designs um, built by people in the community. And um, are available for anyone else. So these are community designs, just like the one I designed. Um, and then these are designs that people have shared with me. You know, I got uh, because I a... because this is shared, some somebody can uh, go to the community and open a. This was built by somebody named Ethan. We can open Ethan's design. It says it's not uh, belonged. So we're going to clone the design. And now we've got a community design that somebody else has built. <coughs> and we can build this ourselves. <coughs> if, if, if I may, uh, Gordon, if you wouldn't mind dropping the, the screen share real quick, I want to show people the quality of these boards. I, I have one of the Aerocore okay. 2 boards on me in hand. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, so you can see right here, uh, folks, <laughs> this, is, this is a board that was – that was uh, made uh, through Gumsticks and then sent to me. But this was, I believe, a board made by you guys, and then you put mm -hmm. it on your on your store, right? By your engineering team. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, we've but done our best. This... Sorry, go ahead. We've done our best to support um, the uh, the drone community as best we can. We, we view that as a um, you know, there are two things that are really interesting about it. One is the tech technical requirements. Uh, and we think that by satisfying the technical requirements of the drone community, we demonstrate the, um, you know, su successful integration, for example, of a barometer that's got, I mean, this barometer will tell you um, when you change your altitude by 10 centimeters. It's got 10 centimeter accuracy on the, on the altimeter, on the barometer. Um, uh, but also, it's open source. Um, the uh, the community is it, it's a, a a great community. This you know, um, uh, RG Pilot PX4 community. And I just want to show, like you know, it, again another thing that that is very interesting here is that you know they've done all of the testing with regards to getting your boards printed out, templated, and everything. So so a lot of times, just to get like these headers to match up. In a lot of cases, like especially with the 96 board standard, you have the high speed and you have the low speed header. Getting things things to match up, I mean, I've seen people go through several iterations. So like you can just get that template. This this AeroCore 2 just pops right onto the 96 board standard. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a question in here that kind of relates to the last thing you talked about, Gordon, when you were screen sharing. Uh, yeah. Mishra says, does that does does it reduce the cost if I purchase any community shared project? So you imported a community shared project. 
and then you were going to maybe say take that to to production does, does yeah, it reduce you know the what? cost we, you're using? It, it, so a couple things if somebody has actually built it before there are community projects there that have not been built before um so if someone's built it before then it really ought to um and um, so I, I, I'm just going to say, if if it has been built before, and uh, no changes are made, then that would immediately cut the NRE in half, because all we need to do is order the fabs. We don't have to, and the fabs have a spin to the spin, you know, a setup cost to the the fab specifically. But that cuts the cost in half. So if there's we, we, we should probably indicate on the community whether or not somebody's built it for that specific reason. That's a great idea. Thank you. you are muted, I'm making a note here. <laughs> I'm muted. I would say that's a, that's a good note. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I think that people people might say, oh, wow, that's a great board. I need to test <clears> something <throat> like that. And then, you know, the price is automatically cut in half. So very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Tayeth comments, save the two grand test fee if unmodified, I'd imagine. But unless unmodified, unless unmodified, it would need retesting. And new tools yeah, and, and that's yeah. Funding. So that that two thousand is not just a, a a testing fee. It's the it's a setup fee at the first at the fab vendor and second at the contract manufacturer. Yeah, cool. Well, so um, Gordon, did you have any other demos to show us? Because we are kind of getting to the top of the hour. We start to wind down about this time. Okay. Um, no, I think that's it. Um, let, let me just look up. I think Celine is. I'm going to mute for a second. I think Celine's on the call. No, okay. No, no nothing else to demo. The the, uh, the team here thinks I've shown enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, honestly, it was really cool to see this too. Um, I, I will admit the last, I think, two connects, I wasn't able to make it to your presentations because I was in meetings. And so like, you know, getting an opportunity to, to see this now live has been awesome. Um, and I think I'm gonna ask Sahaj to make a board for us. What do you think, Sahaj? Yeah, that's, uh, that's good about it. With Gumsticks and Geppetto and Board Builder. Cool, um, one last thing though. Um, yeah. I heard it's Gumstick's birthday. Yes, 15 years ago, we were incorporated. And wow. uh, we've gone through a lot of changes in 15 years. It, it, you know, I'm happy it still feels like a startup. We've got a, 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 a great, enthusiastic team. And uh, uh, I, I, frankly, love working with them. Um, uh, so it's got that, the, the energy of a startup, but we're not new. <laughs> Yeah, very nice. Yeah, so so walking walking down the history timeline, you know, before we we close out, fifteen yeah. years ago, you guys make the first com. Yes. First five Linux ago, com. Yes. Yeah. First Linux com, and then yeah. five years ago, you released Geppetto. Yep. And now today, or not today, but in this last, let me see, when was the announcement? November sixth. It yeah. looks like the announcement for Board Builder. So yes. there are some really cool stuff going on, or there is some very cool stuff going on in Gumsticks. And yeah. I definitely look forward to see what, what happens next. Great. So, Robert, um, thank you very much for having us on here. That's a great way to wrap up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Gordon. Um, okay, you talk to you later. Any, yeah, talk to you later. If you need anything okay, else, bye. feel free to reach out. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right, everyone. That was Gordon Kruberg from Gumsticks talking about Geppetto and board builder awesome episode i definitely encourage everyone to go out and check out excuse me <laughs> to go out and check out uh the uh geppetto uh board builder program you can literally go drop in right on your web browser um, i think i shared the link in here earlier and sahaj has already shared it into the into the youtube video but it's geppetto.gumsticks.com don't forget to follow gumsticks on twitter uh there so you can see any sort of announcements and you know of course if you aren't already following 96 boards do that too 96 boards dot 
org. You can visit us. And then also at 96 boards on all your social media channels. Now, before we close this out, I have one more big and exciting announcement that I'm going to share my screen for. Um, here we go. Sharing my screen, moving this over. Oh, what happened? There we go. I'll bring this back up. So here we go. Now, if you were monitoring at all the 96 boards channels, you will have noticed that 96 boards released or announced a new board yesterday. And so here I'm going to the 96 boards website, which is looking very crisp, very nice. Um, oh, look, I'm getting messages here. The, uh, the, our, our web team has been doing some really cool stuff here. Um, and you'll see that, you know, uh, we continue to, to add modifications to this website. But let's go to this new announcement here. So consumer edition boards for anyone who's familiar with the company called Bitmain. We have a new board that just got released here called the Sofon Edge. I'm going to click here. Sofon Edge is a new consumer edition board featuring the Sofon BM1880. This is the first time uh, an ASICS partner uh, joins in to build a board. And I would encourage everyone to go check this out. Uh, we are still developing out the the, uh, the documentation, but if you uh, kind of go visit here, you'll see that we have, you know, um, some of the documentation already, getting started area, you know, what you need, the spec, what happens when you boot the board for the first time. We can go back to the documentation again. If you want to check out things like any uh, hardware documentation, we do have a hardware user manual, software, a product brief. You can check out the hardware user manual here, but essentially, um, just kind of getting you up and running with the new Sofon Edge development board. And with that, I will kind of, I guess, lead lead to the uh, closing ceremonies here. Um, so, Haj, did you have anything else to add before we, we turn off? I can show one quick thing. Uh, yes, Mishra, sorry, that is a, it is an AI, an AI uh, chip. Ooh, wow, look at that. So this is the new this is the new project. Yeah. 2K. Uh, Guys, we need we need more than 2K on, on, <laughs> on YouTube. Who's gonna help us out? <laughs> 139, where's that number coming from? Oh, that's Mani's Twitter. I just wanted to have oh, Mani, that, Mani. Uh, that, yeah, that's our Instagram. That's my Insta. Yeah. And we then cycle back to YouTube, I think. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Nice. Nice. Awesome. That is the, uh, that's the social media ticker created by Sahaj. And, and if you want to find out more about the different projects that the 96 boards team is working on, you can actually go to the 96 Robert. boards or Todd, Todd, what's up? You asked who's willing to help us out. I'm going to quote yeah. Gary McGuire and you'll get a ton of help. Show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> Yeah, show me the money. You'll have tons of people to help you. Show them the money. No, there's no, there's, there's, there's no money in this game. <laughs> this is a, this is a game of, of, of. I'm giving you fun, fun opportunities to have fun by sharing our YouTube video with the population, our, our YouTube channel. Sorry, but thank you, Todd. <laughs> you know, Robert. All right. It, it's something delusional in our modern world. I went to my landlord and I said, hey, I'm going to pay you in fun. He somehow doesn't like that. He likes the money. <laughs> if someone came and told me they were going to pay me in fun, I would probably say the same thing. I would say, I would laugh and then say, that was fun. Now give me money. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Well, um, I'm going to close this out now. Uh, unless anyone else has any questions on the channel, I'll give one last look. I lost the YouTube channel. Let me see. One last look at the YouTube channel. No one has any questions there. And no questions in the blue jeans. So I think it's time to just call it. It was a pleasure. Next week on open hours, this is going to be a fun one. So bring your sushi, bring your sake, sake, however you want to pronounce it. We are going to get a little tipsy while making sushi in the form of tech. So um, I will be out Rock. buying fish this week. Yeah, what's up? Can I make one somewhat serious comment? It, it does seem I do here, 
from a lot of great entrepreneurs and philosophical philosophers, etc. There is this phrase, do what you love and the money will follow. So maybe, you know, maybe not have fun, but do what you love. There you go. Also, the, there's another, there's another one. What is it? It's a, no, do, do what you love and you'll, what's up? I'm saying everyone needs to love subscribing to our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. No, the, uh, there's another phrase though, Todd, that says, uh, you know, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. I, I really like that phrase because uh, that's well, think, kind of in a way the mo money's following you there. I think there's a, a sitcom called Everyone Loves Sahaj like Everyone Loves Raymond, but I may be wrong. Everyone Loves Sahaj. <laughs> yes. Very nice. So so um, back on the on the theme of closing this out, um, the the next week's episode, I want to invite everyone back. It's going to be a lot of fun. Just to let you know, anyone who's in YouTube, there is a link in the description to come join us on Blue Jeans. That's the same link. It's used every week, 4 p.m. UTC. I am going to be out buying fish this week, a lot of raw fish and seaweed and sticky rice and sake. So if you want to join us next week, same time, same place, I will have a bunch of sushi. And I'm going to try to make the sushi look like my development boards over here. So I'm going to try making like a dragon board or something. The girl who's joining us, she's called Sushi Scientist. Actually, it's probably worth sharing this. Instagram and then Sushi Scientist is going to come up. I got to go here real quick and search for it. Just give me a second. She does all sorts of really cool stuff. And she promised me that she would be making a sushi in the form of our, of one of our, um, one of our 96 boards. And then we're going to eat sushi and drink sake together and talk to her about science and talk to her about all the cool things that she's working on. So definitely come check us out. It'll be a fun episode. We'll get a little tipsy together and talk about science and tech and how sushi can help people learn about science and tech. So thank you. I think we're going to start turning these, these, uh, these streams off now. Um, and we're just right at the top of the hour, so it's perfect. I um, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and a safe weekend. All right, Saj, um, I think we can close out. I'll, I'll stop the recording now. Thank you all for joining us. All right, recording. Recording now. has stopped. We couldn't get the the the, the Facebook working, so um, uh, that sucks. But bye, bye YouTube. You. Thank you.